hey, Evangelist Rob here prophetically decreeing and declaring that the Lord is going to set a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And many times God did this in the Bible with Brother Joseph when his brothers threw him in a pit. He got out of the pit. The Lord set a table for Joseph, for those that were once his enemies. But you know what he did? He hugged them, he loved them, he blessed them. The Bible says pray and love your enemies. Hallelujah. And then you'll put the burning coals in there. That's a whole other show. But before I continue, I'm a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'd be an honor if you'd subscribe to the ministry channel via YouTube. The shows that are over six minutes are Bible studies where I teach and expound out of scripture in a revelatory fashion. <clears throat> Hit the like button, comment. If you have a prayer request, put it in the comment section. I read them. I do pray over some of them. Uh, I can join my faith with yours because the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. So when we come together, there's an exponential faith and a synergy and we break through. But let's just pray. Father, your word says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. <clears throat> In heavenly places and many times we think it's the person that against us when it's the spirit that's inciting the person to be against us so we pray for our enemies lord we ask you to bless them touch them pour your present out presence out on them in jesus mighty name and friends when jesus was going to the cross peter piped up peter piper apostle peter tried to stop him and jesus said satan get behind me now, Jesus wasn't calling Peter Satan. He was saying it was the influence behind Peter that was trying to stop Jesus from fulfilling his mission. Because now, how many know if Jesus didn't go to the cross and shed his blood for the sins of mankind, the new covenant couldn't be established and we couldn't be born again. So many times it's not the person, but the spirit or the spirits behind people. That, in, that try to incite us and thwart us and harm us and wound us. Now, Joseph has a dream. He probably should have kept his mouth shut, but he goes and tells his brothers that they're going to serve him. And that didn't go over too well. And they took little Joey. They said, come here, Joey. They threw him in a pit, lied to the parents. They say an animal got him. But God purged Joseph some haughtiness and pride. And let me just say this, when jo if Joseph was going to get out of that pit prematurely, he was not going to hug those brothers. He was going to crack them one. But God allowed things to be purged out of Joseph, Joseph's life. So when he got out of the pit, he loved them and took care of them. So let me just say this also. Here's a key. Your worst day will come when you have no enemies. Your worst day will come when everyone loves you and applauds you. Now, you might think that's a little strange, but I want to give you a paradigm shift. Our enemies keep us humble and keep us really submitted and, you know, towards the Lord. Paul had an enemy in his flesh, and he pleaded with the Lord three times. He said, please take this thorn out of my... The Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. So God's saying whatever you're going through, whatever they're doing to you or trying, his grace is sufficient for you, friends. His grace is with you, and there's always grace for the race. So never always think people are your enemy. I see this on social networks a lot. Here's a key. People always think it's people that are against them. And they, they feel like they always have enemies and they're being victimized or they're a victim and people are always after them and trying... Come on, can we grow up around here? Just keep your head with the Lord and keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. And you won't sink when you walk out on the water. Now, let me read this to you. Psalms 23. David said, verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David said, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm thinking of Mephibosheth in the Bible. I believe it's 1 Samuel where the Bible says he's now going to eat at the king's table continually. But, you know, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth had a problem. He was lame in his feet. He was crippled. Maybe that table was covering his lameness in front of all those kings. So just a little revelation there. You know, God will cover our lameness, our weakness, our limp, 
didn't Jacob have a limp in the Bible? He wrestled with the angel all night. So friends, I just wanted to come on here and encourage you. God is the one of vindication, not only restoration, which in Joel it says he'll restore the years the canker worm and locusts have eaten. But God not only restores, he vindicates and also give what's called recompense. And that's you're paid back with interest everything that the enemy stole. Man, if you keep your heart right, this is so powerful. Because the Bible says if you catch a thief, he's got to pay you back sevenfold, seven times. So you got to keep your heart right. You can't lash out. You can't get in the natural and you can't. This is not a natural battle we're in. This is many times. Now, we have to work out relationships with the natural. We know that. But many times it's a spiritual battle. Once again, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in heaven. We wrestle against the spirit that's behind people. So keep your heart right. The Lord will not only restore, he will vindicate and he'll give you recompense. And you've got a right to bring the enemy to the courts of heaven where he's accused you day and night. In Revelations, the Bible says he accuses the brethren day and night. Bring them to the courts of heaven. Ask God the judge to take the gavel. This is a hairbrush. I brushed my hair before the show. Looks good again, doesn't it? And ask him to find guilty over, you know, to find the enemy renderless, render him guilty and powerless in the guilty over John Susie. Because we never really plead blood. We never really plead innocent. We never plead guilty. We always plead the blood. Hallelujah. Plead the blood of Jesus, my friends. God's for you, and who or what can be against you? He didn't spare his only son. How shall he freely give you all things with God? The enemy meant for evil. God's going to turn it around for the good and set a pres and set a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now, if you made it this far on the rant, please subscribe to the ministry channel. It'd be an honor of mine. Thank you so much in advance, and hit the like button, comment if you want to. You ask me any questions or you want to tweak or maybe correct anything I said, I'm always welcome to correction. If you're not born again, Jesus said you must be born again. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no man. The most moral person cannot and will not make heaven their home when they take their last breath. Say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross of my sins. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. I submit my life to you. I give my life to you, Jesus. I commit my life to you. In the comments section, if you prayed that prayer, just say I prayed the prayer. Amen, Rob. I'll pray over that seed. The Lord bless you. Amen.